I'm Marg Robertson, and um, I just like to talk a little bit about the painting that I've got in this show. And it is about, um, it's about honoring the memory of a special dog that belonged to my daughter. He died about almost two years ago. And um, if you've ever had a pet that passed away, you'll probably, um, you would probably know the depth of the loss and the grief that you can feel when this happens. Um, it makes us think and ponder about the afterlife and question what we believe in, I believe. So um, can we find any comfort in believing the spirit is still with us of our pets? Um, if we can open ourselves to this possibility, we might be surprised to find we have a connection to them that we would not have believed. And so we found this to be true with Roscoe. I think that there must be an energy or a vibration of love that, um, that we have that transcends the veil between us and the afterlife. And so I wanted to do this painting just basically for my daughter because she loved her dog so much. And when this show came up, it, um, I thought, oh, well, this is really a good time to be able to, to do this. So, so I applied for it and got in and that was really great. And it took me quite a while to, um, to figure out what I was gonna put in the show, but, um, or in the painting. But um, like, um, if you've read my little story, you know that um, we did see signs from the afterlife. And that was very, um, was quite surprising because, you know, you sort of wonder about these things that you don't know for sure. And so um, when the first one came, it was, it was quite exciting because um, we had been out walking where we've always walked our dogs. And <clears throat> There was this huge storm. It was really weird storm cloud came up and we were quite far out. So we decided we had better get going home because it looked like it might be a, a pretty good storm. And so, but the, the clouds are so interesting. We took pictures of it and I have my little family with me all the time. So, um, and so that was fine. We went home and um, later on when I downloaded these pictures into my computer, we saw, I saw this, like the cloud formation had, it really looked like the dog, a dog's head. <laughs> so that was the first part. And, and then also on this same photo, um, there was this little white mist that was on the side. And the, it's the same one as the dog's face. And um, I thought, well, what, oh, that's probably just like a little glitch on the, the lens of the camera. But like, I've never had that before on my camera. No, you know, no drop, water drop or anything that showed up. So I thought, well, you know, you really think that must be something there. And um, so that was the main things that I saw. But my daughter afterwards had, um, she had uh, different signs that came up for her. And the really surprising one for me was the little heart shaped cloud in the sky. And like, she, took a picture of it and it's actually that that definite it's a definite heart with a little thing going through it. So, so that was really neat and the other ones were little things that happened that she um you know a, a feather showed up right on her doorstep this big really big feather and different little things like that so so those are the things that i put into the portrait and um i just used acrylic because it's it's quite a forgiving thing to I use with people. I've had other things that I've you know thought were messages from the other side, but um, I didn't like wasn't really sure what I believed with the the afterlife of pets. Of course, I wanted to believe this, but you know you sort of don't know. So um, so this was quite quite interesting to me to know this. Yeah, and. Um, my own dog passed away just about three months ago while this show, while I was doing these paintings, and it was really very heartbreaking. And um, 
I just, I was really, really sad about it. And I was hoping that I might get some messages from him. But the only one that I've got so far was when I was taking out his bed and stuff and um, cleaning up some of like the stuff that was his. I took his bed outside and a little dragonfly came along and sat on the edge of the bed and just sat there and sat there and sat there. So I thought, well, I think that must have been him coming to say goodbye. But since then, I haven't had any real, any other real um, messages. But I'm hoping in time I might. Ours was a group collaboration. There were eight of us out of the uh, of the sketch and paint club, and uh, <clears throat> it was interesting because most of us had not done a collaboration like this before. And at first, it was a little bit shaky. Uh, it started off with we were going to do a painting of something that was in nature, and then it, it sort of segued into uh, a dying rose, and uh, we also were dealing with COVID at the time. So trying to do these meetings with a group of people uh, that we would have liked to have had more meetings, but we did have meetings outside. It was very beautiful. We we're in the park down by the wharf there. So the meetings were, were really good and working together to try and, and bring a cohesive uh, thing together with all our different diverse attitudes and thoughts and ways that we do things. We used acrylic and watercolor, basically. We had to figure out what kind of things. No uh, mixed media was difficult. We had to have this cohesiveness. Deciding on the color schemes and trying to make everybody sort of work together. These are on 12 by 12 squares. And uh, it was a little bit, um, I guess, difficult at first as we tried to figure out just exactly how we were going to do this and bring this together. But through our meetings and through the uh, internet, we managed to put it together. And I think everybody ended up quite pleased with the end result. It seems to be quite cohesive. And uh, what was interesting as well, as we're going through this, <clears throat> trying to get this group together and, and make that work, is the questions that came up as we're doing a dying rose. And uh, <clears throat> a, a rose is such a beautiful flower in its, in its fullness, in its vibrancy. And as it dies, as it goes slowly away, the colors change, uh, the texture changes, the petals start to wilt, and then they drop off. And you end up with just this little round bulb that the rose hit after where this beautiful flower used to be. So it brought up a lot of questions and thoughts as we were all doing this. And uh, that also was a really interesting procedure because it, it was um, the variations in what people were coming up with is how to look at our own aging process, our own bodies as they get older, uh, where is the beauty in it? Uh, how deep is beauty? What is beauty? Uh, what is death? What is actually, when does death actually happen? Because even in, um, in the dying, when you end up with the rose hip, the rose hip is still full of nutrients that nurtures other life forms. The petals themselves fall to the ground and become compost for the, for the, the plant itself, the rose bush itself, or for other life. It doesn't really stop. So some of the some of us went fairly deeply into trying to understand this and explore this whole concept of dying and death. And um, in the in the end, um, we I think we've come away a little richer because of this this collaboration in in exploring all this. It's something that we have grown. I think individually we've grown a little bit. We've come to come to understand ourselves and the process of life a little better. And then we also have um, the experience of working in a collaboration 
which I think most of us would be quite happy to do again. So it was, it was quite a delightful process. So, thanks. This drawing is about moving and from one place to another and, and the time that it takes in order to settle in. So often when you move uh, locations, uh, there is a, a little bit of a, a, a time span in between when you feel comfortable in a place and, when, and, and, and you're looking back at your other place and you're kind of a, a mourning the other place a little bit. Uh, and so things occur to you, you get vivid uh, flashes of memory of the last place that you lived in, and they're overlaid onto the place that you're living right now. Sometimes you look at people and you think you know them, and, and, but they're not the people that you know because you know that in an instant that it's not the right thing that you've just thought, but um, you think you recognize them anyway. And uh, you, you know, lots of different things like that. And um, so I wanted to do that feeling of um, being a little bit ungrounded, a little bit um, at loose ends in the new place. And it, it felt to me like it was kind of like a little death, you know, that you had to give away uh, something in order to gain something at the other end. And so I thought uh, that I would really, really like to do. And when I heard about the, the topic, I thought, oh, well, I kind of draw in, in, in a way that, that speaks to loss anyway. And it would be really interesting if I could make that way of drawing uh, span over into this, this concept. And, and as I was feeling quite despondent at the time, I thought, well, okay, this, this is where I'm gonna go with it. Um, and uh, anyway, so uh, I guess I could talk about the drawing itself. So I had been drawing with this method uh, where I, I don't face the drawing. I actually face outwards or to the side of the room. Uh, and I don't look at what I'm drawing. So it's, I call it like a backwards drawing or a turned away from the paper kind of drawing. And uh, it's a method that, I, that I, I started in a master's degree program in 2007. And then I've been, you know, revisiting it, going away and revisiting it, going away and revisiting it many times. But um, I do like it because I think what I can, what I can gain from it is that I, I feel that the line has a certain kind of uh, expression in it that I don't get when I'm facing the paper. I try, but I, I feel that it's got a different kind of line and maybe that has an, an enhanced uh, feeling of expression to it. Um, I feel that it also matches with an aspect of the concept. So I'm turned away from the drawing and I'm not looking and I feel lost. And so it's, it's a way of uh, experiencing loss in the drawing and the drawing process. So that's where I thought, well, this would, could come in quite well with this drawing, with this, uh, this show as well. So in this drawing, it's a little bit different though, because only the figure in the center is done with this backwards method of, of drawing. The rest of the drawing is done with uh, a normal way facing the drawing. Um, I'm working from my memory a lot of the time, but I am facing the drawing so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, and uh, so, and the other part that is new for me for this drawing is that I worked in paint and I have a, a white line of paint in there and I had never done that before. So the two things were quite, uh, it was, uh, it, it allows me more possibilities for the future. So it was sort of like, oh, well, it gives me a new direction. And so I was happy with that. I actually haven't used uh, many method, many sheets of paper before. Uh, my usual uh, drawing surface is usually quite large and I find that it's difficult to ship and it would allow, it would, it's better for me if I am actually present and helping or that if I um, 
can send all the little bits and pieces with the piece. It w it's just a practical thing, really. Um, and so I decided, well, I wonder if I could get the same feeling to the drawing, which is expansive. That's what I wanted, um, but using several sheets of paper instead. So that's, it's just a practical thing. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Um, it's funny when I, I don't have the piece in front of me, obviously you have it. And so I, I just printed off at the last minute, I printed off a little copy of it. And I thought, oh, well, I, I've forgotten that I have uh, two little houses here and there and one, one on one side and one on the other side of the figure. And I had forgotten bits and pieces about it. Um, and, and it's kind of nice, it's like visiting a friend again. I meant them to be a place of living, just a little home, yeah. And uh, I have, so I have them on either side, sort of the idea that the, the one home on, in the Kamloops side um, would be, uh, it's got a little bit of an X on it. <laughs> and so that one's not the one, but it's the same home is over on the other side. So I just thought, oh, I'll make them the same, the same look and then they'll, they'll have the idea of a concept rather than an individual home. That's wonderful. <clears throat> I thought I would keep to, uh, I thought I would keep to land masses because I have, I do have maps in there and I, it's hard to know where to stop. You know, um, you, you, you think of all these ideas of things that you could put in the drawing, but then I decided, well, just, just limit it to land masses. So I have the cliffs around Kamloops, my home of 30 years. Um, and, you know, they're very dear to me, all those hoodoo type of uh, a cliffs, and, and they're just done from memory. Um, and then I have the maps on the other side. And the, the map on the other side, the place where I'm moving to, which is the island there, uh, it doesn't have too many memories yet, so I didn't put anything in there. 